So I saw this question on Dcard today. Anything think about Dcard as the Taiwan version of Reddit. The goal of this question is to find the minimum and the maximum value of this function. But the interesting part is that we are not going to be using any calculus. So I thought about it and said, hmm, how can we do it? We will see that we have the sine and cosine. Hmm, we don't like them too much, right? I will tell you there's actually a substitution that we can make so that we can turn this into just a regular rational function in terms of some new variable, in terms of like polynomial over polynomial. That substitution goes like this. You let t equal tangent, and usually it's x over 2. But here, we have 2x, 2x, so x right here is enough. This right here is called the virus drop substitution. If you have done some calculus integrals, then this is actually one of the integration techniques. And the purpose is just that. Once we take this into the t world, we'll just get a regular rational function, and we will have a better chance. So let's have a look. Right here, tangent of x is t. Let's put it as t over 1. And then we can draw a right triangle. x is the angle here. And tangent is opposite over adjacent. So we have t and 1 here. And the hypotenuse is just going to be square root of 1 square plus t squared. Now, we will have to figure out sine of 2x. Well, first we will use the double angle identity because this triangle only has the x. But this right here is the same as 2 sine x times cosine x. And then we see the sine x is just the opposite over hypotenuse. So that's t over square root of 1 plus t squared. And then cosine x is just adjacent over that. And then work that out, we see that sine of 2x is just going to be 2t on the top over this and that we just get inside, which is 1 plus t squared. And then let's go ahead and do the same thing for cosine of 2x. Use the double angle identity. I will write that as cosine squared x minus sine squared x. This means we have cosine x and the square minus sine x square. So this right here is 1 over that. And then this right here is t over that. And we see that they will have the same denominator, square, square root cancel, square root, square cancel. So we will just have 1 plus t square on the bottom. And the top right here is just 1 minus t squared. And we cannot simplify this anymore. Now, we're just going to be plugging this and that into here and here. And this is what we have right here. And then let's just simplify this a little bit. I will multiply the top and bottom by this denominator. And then work that out. Take this times 1, we'll just get that. And then take this times that, they cancel. And we just have to work out 2 times 2t, which is 4t. Over, take this times 4, distribute the 4, we get 4 plus 4t squared. And then take this times that, they cancel. But be careful, here we have a minus. We will have to distribute. So we get a minus 1, and then minus minus, which is a plus t squared. And then rearrange this a little bit. On the top, we have t squared plus 4t plus 1. And the bottom is 4t squared, and then another t squared, 5t squared, and then that's plus 3. So y is equal to this. And this is still a pretty hard question. I still don't want to take any derivatives. How can we do it, though? Well, the good thing for this rational function is that the top is just a quadratic, likewise the bottom is also a quadratic. So we can try the following. I'm going to be multiplying this to both sides. So first we have y times 5t squared plus 3, and that's equal to the right hand side here, t squared plus 4t plus 1. And then distribute this a little bit, we get 5yt squared plus 3y. And then I'm just going to be moving all these terms to the left-hand side. So subtract t squared to both sides, and then I will factor out the t squared right here. 
So we will have 5y minus 1 times t squared. Continue, put this to the other side, that's minus 4t. And then subtract 1 to both sides, we will have plus 3y minus 1, and all that is equal to 0. Now, have a look. This is just going to be a quadratic equation in terms of t. Very nice, right? But we still have to think about how exactly can, th can this help us to find the minimum and the maximum for this though. Well, the minimum and the maximum is kind of like telling you about the range of this function, meaning all the possible values for the y. And now we kind of transfer this equation into this right here. In order to get the possible values for y, we will have to make sure that this quadratic equation is solvable in terms of real numbers. And how can we make that happen? Well, we have to make sure the discriminant. So I would say we need b squared minus 4ac is greater than or equal to 0. Here is the a, here is the b, and here is the c. Now we can set out an inequality with y, and then we have the condition for y. So for b squared, Put this, square that, so that's negative 4 square minus 4, a is that, which is 5y minus 1, c is this, because this right here is the constant term in the t world. So multiply by 3y minus 1. All that has to be greater than or equal to 0. Now, for the rest, it's just algebra in terms of like quadrating all that, so I'm just going to be telling you guys the answers. For the rest of the computations, right here, if you work them out, you will end up with negative 60y squared plus 32y plus 12. And you have to make sure this is greater than or equal to 0. This is also a quadratic, right? And notice that the coefficient right here is negative, so you know it's going to be an open down parabola like this. And we have two solutions. Notice that the constant term right here is 12, so this is meant to be 12, right? And perhaps I'm not going to show you guys the y-axis. I will call this right here y1, I'll call this right here y2. And solve it, I will tell you that y1 is equal to 4 minus square root of 61 over 15. And then y2 is equal to 4 plus square root of 61 over 15. This right here, it's a smaller value and it will give you the minimal because in order for this to be true, y has to be in between of here and here and that's precisely the y1. And then likewise this, it's the bigger value which will be the maximum. And there you have it, that's the answer for that question.